Now, we will be talking about the principle of hybridization. And in organic chemistry, this would give us a consistent view on the manner that electrons or the manner that atoms are bonding to each other in their structural formulas. Since this is organic chemistry, we talk about the most important atom in this subject, which is carbon. Now, carbon has six electrons. It has an atomic number of six, right? So it should be the number of protons and electrons. Well, if we specify it further, it would be something like this, 1s2, right? Then 2, 2s2, two, two so 1, 2, 3, we have f 4 electrons here, meaning the other 2 electrons are in the 2p. So this here comprises the valence. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, we have 4 valence electrons, and if we draw it in the box diagram, again following the Hans rule, we fill this first. Let's label this first. 1s, uh, 2s, I mean. 2px, 2py, 2pz. So we fill first the s. Then we put the rest. We have two more anymo anyway. So 1, 2. So that's these are the valence electrons of carbon. Now, if we draw it further using the azimuthal, uh, I mean, well, using their shapes, we have here the S, so that's the S. Then we have three P's. Alright, and uh, let's draw the third one here. Two electrons in the S, so it's like one here and one here. And then one electron in the 2PX, one electron in the 2PY, and then this third P orbital has none. Well, as you can see here, the only electrons which are available for bonding are these two. So meaning the only ones that you can fill up are these. This one has no electron, cannot attract a bond. This one is filled up, cannot have a bond there anymore. It's already satisfied. So here you would assume that we would have two bonds for carbon. Well, let's look at methane, the simplest organic molecule there is. If we recall again in, gen uh, in general chemistry, another difference between the sigma and the pi bond is that the sigma bond is always the first bond between two atoms and the rest, the rest, the rest are pi bonds. Well, since all of these are single bonds, they, they should automatically all be sing uh, sigma bonds. So here, we have four sigma bonds and uh, this is carbon at the middle. So if we uh, explained it like this, but we this one is not consistent then there was a problem this is where we use the property or the principle of hybridization what does this say it simply says that for example in this valence shell all of the orbitals or two or more orbitals combine to form what we call as hybridized orbitals so, meaning that, for example, we combine an S and a P, we would get an SP orbital, and it would have the properties of S and properties of P. Alright? And uh, for, the dis for the sake of discussion, any hybridized orbital would always only form a sigma bond. Alright? Any hybridized orbital would form a sigma bond, not a pi bond, never a pi bond. So there are actually several ways of hybridizing them. So let's go first with this. So for example, let's use a color code. I use green. I'll use green. For example, we combine all of this together. How many do we mix? We have 1s and then 3p, right? Alright, so what what we call the hybridized orbital would be S, and then we have three P's, right? SP3. We have SP3 hybridized orbitals. And what happens when we hybridize them is we follow the Hans rule, but we skip the azimuthal quantum number because again, they would all look like they are the same 
So now, it would be available, and as I said, any hybridized orbital would form a sigma bond. This one would form sigma bonds. So we can say here that methane, the carbon in methane is an sp3 carbon. But this is not always the case. What happens if we, if we leave one orbital behind? Well, we draw the, the one that's not involved in black, then let's draw the rest in blue. Since we combined one S and two P orbitals, we call them SP2. And uh, for, for simplification of discussion, any unhybridized orbital will always be, always be pi bond. It's opposite to any hybridized orbital, alright? So, with that said, with that said, well, we, we maintain this also. We still maintain this kind of order. With that said, we have three, I mean, we have three of this. We have three pi bonds and the re the uh, the single unhybridized orbital will give you one pi bond for example this is ethene or ethylene its trivial name is ethylene we have here f for this carbon three sigma bonds and since this is a double bond the second bond would be pi well since here we see that it has three sigma bonds and one pi we can say that this carbon here is sp2 hybridized. So how will you easily see an sp2 carbon? As long at, as it has one pi bond, well, automatically, it is sp2, just to make it easier, right? Now, the final way of merging them together is if you combine only this two, since it's just s and p, you would call them as sp no need to put the sp1 or, or the number one then we have two unhybridized orbitals so here we would conf uh, we would we would be able to say that it could give you two pi bonds and two uh, two sigma bonds and two pi bonds for example we have ethyne or the trivial name acetylene look at this uh, let's just draw this bond here here we have a sigma bond for this car let's look at this carbon one sigma bond one sigma bond and as i said the rest of the bonds between two atoms after the first would be pi so here we have two pi because this one is sigma let's say then the other two should be pi and uh, here we have two pi yes check and two sigma check this carbon here is sp so just to make it easier it has two pi bonds. So meaning, for example, I have this carbon here, and it's bonded in this manner, since as I said, it ha uh, the first bond is always sigma, this one sh is pi, you could say that this carbon at the middle is also sp, because it's the same in the number of pi and sigma bonds as with this one.